Welcome to WCO-TV's Canadian Communications Crime, a show where viewers see communication crimes in Canadian workplaces and hone their own skills to solve them. We are your hosts for the show today, and we'll get you started on your crime-solving journey. So take out your mobile devices or your paper and pen and get ready. Canadian Communications Crime number one is Tuesday at 10 in the morning, Mr. Sanchez was discovered to have spent an entire team meeting without making any contributions to the board table discussion. When asked, what would you recommend to solve our quarterly dip in revenue? Mr. Sanchez replied, I'm certain the experts on this topic will have more important things to say about it than I would. Crime solvers, how many of these Canadian communication crimes did Mr. Sanchez commit? A. Not taking individual initiative. B. Refusing to collaborate on group problem solving. C. Being on time. D. Participating in self-improvement classes. Or E. Not sharing a personal opinion when requested. The answers are not taking individual initiative, refusing to collaborate on group problem solving, and not sharing a personal opinion when requested. In Canada, Canadian employees are expected to contribute to problem solving sessions. Those who do not are seen as either incompetent, too shy to be promoted, or lacking in initiative. Viewers, how did you do? Great? Well, now here's the next crime scene. Canadian Communications Crime Number 2 Mrs. Popov is a recently arrived international trained worker from Russia. Yesterday, she was observed by our communications crime team speaking to her upper management in the following manner. I believe the system we are using is inefficient and requires new technology. After considering all the people working here in my area, I have come to the conclusion that I alone have the expertise to address this issue and can begin the work immediately. Crime solvers, how many of the Canadian communication crimes did Mrs. Popov commit? A. Going directly to her upper management with a suggestion for improvement. B. Speaking too directly and confrontationally to a superior. Or C implying that the company system was not good enough and suggesting she had the expertise to solve it when she had not been with the company long enough to establish her credibility. D, showing lack of modesty. Or E, not respecting the team she was working with. Or finally F, appearing impolite. The answers are all of the above. In comparison to Canadians, Russians are more direct and strong in their verbal style. It is true that Canadians expect clear and direct answers, but there is a hidden expectation that you will present your ideas to the right person, at the right time, and in the right tone. Additionally, although legally there is gender equity in Canada's workplaces, many male superiors are threatened by overly confident women, especially if they do not show respect for their team and appear confrontational. It is very important to Canadians to be seen as being diplomatic, polite and modest about one's abilities. Direct answers to direct questions are valued, but being too direct with initiatives, especially to a superior, is considered rude. So, crime scene sleuths, how did you do on this one? The whole question of direct and indirect communication in Canada is not as easy as it appears, is it? So now that you have your communications, crime solver brains working at full speed, see what you can do with the exercises that follow our game in the next activity. <laughs> 